dotes and dozy dotes and little lambsy divey, a kiddly divey too. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Morning, Walter. You all right, kiddo? I'm fine, Andy. Bit damp, but you'd expect that down here. Can I see you to your bus? No, thanks. I'm on my bike. Oh. Well, you'll save on fares, then. <laughs> I reserve my defence. Do you know it's Wednesday morning? Never. Your calendar's fast. You've had me worried stiff. I thought you was in the canal. No, it was fully booked, so I came straight home. Straight home? The straightest you've ever walked is in a zigzag. I've seen hospital temperature charts looking straighter, I have. Oh, shut up, woman. I'll shut up when I'm ready to shut up. Talk among yourselves. This will take us through tomorrow. Never mind tomorrow. Where about yesterday? I thought after the night before last you wasn't going to drink anymore. Flo, the state I'm in, I couldn't drink anymore. Good night. It's not night. It's morning. So when you wake up this afternoon thinking it's this morning and you go off pubbing it this evening thinking it's this afternoon, when you come back tonight thinking it's this evening, don't expect to find me here. Would you care to rephrase that? I'll be off, mate. That's what I'm saying. You'll come back this afternoon. Er, uh, you mean this evening? Don't confuse me. Whenever you come back, you'll find me gone. Gone? Where? I've got it all worked out, don't you fret. I'll find myself a little flat. And live all on your own? That's the general idea, mate. But when I'm out pubbing, you're all on your own without the bother of moving. I've got to think quicker on my feet. He is running late. If he don't get here soon, his beard will get cold. And when he does get here, his hands will be cold. You know why he's late, Jack? He's losing his touch. It takes him twice as long to borrow his beer money these days. No. Oh, come on, Flo. Just two quid. Not two quid, not one quid. Not a sausage. Not till you've paid me back the two quid you already owe me. But that wasn't for me, pet. That was for Chalky. I don't care if it was for Joan Collins. I want it back. But Chalky gave it to Ruby to give to you. She owed you two quid, don't you remember? I do remember. Ruby always pays her debts, unlike some. So I haven't got it. Chalky hasn't got it. Ruby hasn't got it. You're the only one that's got it. And I'm the one that's keeping it. But we're all square. I suppose so. But you said when we were all square, you'd lend me two quid. So poppy up. You're looking a bit down in the mouth, Andy. Why, I'm down in the mouth, Chalky. How would you feel if you just swindled your own wife? Fantastic. For a measly two quid? I'm ashamed of you, Chalky. It's no use, Chalky. It's got to stop. You know she's starting to leave me, don't you? Bad as that, eh? You don't know the half of it. She wants custody of the telly. A word with you, Mr. Cap. Can I have a word with you, big Ed? Join the queue, Shirley. This won't take a jiffy. Oh! What was that in aid of? If it was for last night, you've already poured a perfectly good gin and tonic over me head. It's not for last night. It's for tonight. I haven't done anything yet. I know you haven't, but I've no time to wait. I've got a date outside the Regal. You had that coming, Mr. Cap. Now then, about these here arrears. Now, now, Percy, I never combine business with pleasure. Collecting your rent is no pleasure for me, I can assure you, Mr. Cap. And not getting it can't very well count as business, so we'll call it a day. You should be ashamed of yourself, Mr. Cap. I've said the same thing myself, haven't I, Chalky? He said the same thing himself. Sending your good lady out to work, letting her raise the rent on a tod, and when she does raise the rent, where is it? Spent! <laughs> She left temptation in my way, Percy. She did not leave it in your way, Mr. Cap. She left it very distinctly out of your way. In the toolbox. Why, oh why, do you suddenly take it upon yourself to do odd jobs in the one week my rent's in the toolbox? Don't you go accusing me of doing odd jobs, mate. There's such a thing as the law of libel, you know. Tell him what I was doing with that hammer and pair of pliers, Chalky. He was trying to flog them to me for the price of a pint. Do I get my back rent or not? Well... I'm a bit short at present, Percy. Um, can I owe you double next week? Can you owe me double next week? That's the best one I've heard so far. Now, listen here, you. 
There's going to be some big changes at number 37. Funnily enough, that's exactly what Flo keeps saying. I think what she has in mind is shifting the sofa nearer the fire and moving the sideboard to the other wall. Don't push me too far, Mr Cap. I say, Percy, you want to buy hammer and pliers? One on Rony, never been used. Oh! <laughs> Don't encourage me, Chalky. Percy's right, Flo's right. Oh, there you are. And the vicar's right. I'm no good to an hammer vicar. That is the understatement of the year. <laughs> Now, I don't frequent public houses, as you know. We've noticed that. Every pub we go in, Andy always says, has the vicar been in? And the answer's <coughs> nearly always no. <laughs> I've started, so I'll finish. As I don't frequent public houses, it must be obvious that I'm here for a purpose. Now, I've just left your wife. Don't worry, lad. She'll take you back. She always does me. Don't bank on it. With all your cadging and borrowing, she's had all she can take. Be warned, Andy. If she's considering packing her bags, it's because you're driving her to him. Driving her, am I? Well, the way the ale's flowing round here today, there's no chance of getting breathalyzed. Forget the ale. I've told you before, booze is your worst enemy. Watch this. But you've always said, love your enemy. I never said anything about swallowing it, did I? Fifteen all. Think about it, lad. You've got a good wife there. She's one in a million. So is the chance of you buying a drink. Boozing, cudging, womanising, womanising, cudging, boozing. There must be more in life, Chalky. He's always snooker. Best of three frames. That man of mine, Ruby, I felt like clobbering him again this morning. Again? I felt like clobbering him yesterday. Just for a minute there, you had me going. I don't know why he bothers coming home at all, except to feed his pigeons. What with them and his snooker and his dog racing and his pubbing and his fancy women, I see him for half an hour a day. Same with mine. Still, never mind, Rube. Half an hour soon passes, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Evening, Lucifer. Is this the side turning on the right? It's you again, is it? And where do you think you're going? How do I know? I don't even know where I'm coming from. Here we go. Oh! Help! I can't ride a bike! Every town has one, you know. If we ever paid rates, this would be what we paid them for. Wheel him in. No. I'd have thrown him back, Flo. But as it's the third time this month, you get to keep him. At least it's bath night. It'll save on hot water. They give me artificial perspiration, Flo. Give him some bath, he saved me life. Uh, no need for that, Flo. I'll be on my way. Good night, Keith. And don't feel too bad. I quite understand why you had to fetch him back to me. Good night, Oshifer. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Following that brief, I'll be up before the disciplinary committee by tomorrow dinner time. Well, aren't you downright disgusted with yourself? I am, Flo. I am. I nearly had it this time. It's right what they say. All your past misguided life flashes before your eyes. All of it. You must have been in that canal all day. I've been a wasteful flow. I'm no good to nobody. You've told me it. Percy's told me it. Jack's told me it. The vicar's told me it. Shirley's told me it. Who's Shirley? A young lass I don't know from Adam. Even Chalky ticked me off for putting the black when I nominated the blue. I'm a failure. Well, what's to be done about it? You say you're good for nothing and nobody's arguing. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't walk out this minute. Your curl is at rust. It's raining. Right. That does it. No, don't leave me, pet. I've done a lot of thinking on the way home and I've decided to turn over a new leaf. We've heard that before. Oh, no, this time I mean it. I was led into that canal for a purpose, Flo. I've seen the light. I'll believe that when I see it. I'll be a different man. I'll even stop wearing me cap in bed. Starting when? First thing tomorrow morning. Meanwhile, don't stand there, yattering woman. Where's me flaming supper? 
Don't encourage you. No froth. Is there anything that's all right, pet? One grunt for yes, two grunts for no. Best breakfast I've ever eaten, pet. It's the only breakfast you've ever eaten. The time you usually come downstairs. Anything in the paper, pet? There's a very interesting item on the front page. A man took his wife to the pictures. Now, don't be like that light in my heart. I'll take you to the pictures. I think he's still under the influence. Do you mean like you took me to the Regal? In February 1981, when you walked me as far as the pay box and left me there, I wouldn't care, but I had to buy my own ticket. I'll take you to the Regal tonight, Flo. I'll buy the tickets. I'll even sit next to you. You know they're not doing Humphrey Bogart films anymore, don't you? I don't care if it's flipping Bambi, Pet. If my darling wife wants to go to the pictures, to the pictures she shall go. Either you've got that orange juice spiked with summit, or you still haven't recovered from last night. Be fair, pet, I wasn't that bad, was I? Well, let me put it this way. When you looked in the mirror, you tried to change channels. You're harking back to the past floor. My pubbing days are over. Oh, yes. And what are you going to drink of an evening? Tea. Tea? From a pint glass. Does Jack at the Boilermaker's Arms know of this change of lifestyle? It can probably get a rates rebate. You may mock and you may scoff, but I'm a changed man, pet. Now, give us a kiss and get off to work. I'll do the washing up. Washing up? You? I've done it before. What's up with you? Do you mean that milk bottle you rinsed out on our first wedding anniversary? That's right. For them flowers I fetched you. Half oh, a dozen daffs, bless him. And he only charged me cost price. Now, where'd you keep your deterrent? On the draining board. It means detergent. Listen, woman, you say detergent, I say deterrent. It keeps me out of the kitchen, right? Oh, you was quite like your old self again there, pet. Are you sure you're going to be able to keep this up? You'll see whether I can keep it up or not, because as soon as I put them plates in to soak, I'm going to do the housework as well. You must have bumped your head when you fell in the canal last night, pet. Go straight back to bed and I'll fetch the doctor. You're sarky now, Flo, but when you come home and find the house all spick and span, you'll laugh on the other side of your face. I'll do more than that, pet. I'll weep for joy. Now, if you're serious, where do I keep my mop and bucket? In the broom cupboard? You misjudge me, pet. Off you go. Draw, pet. Flo, where's the broom cupboard? It's his timing I like. Morning, missus. You shouldn't be carrying that heavy bin. You should get chalky to fit some casters on it for you. Are you feeling all right, Mr. Carr? Right as rain, Ruby. Never felt better. Am I shaking this rug the right way up? It's not the way you're shaking it that amazes me, it's the fact that you're shaking it. Are you doing it for a bet? I am no longer a betting man, missus. I don't bet, drink, play snooker, womanise, throw me dinner in the fireplace or smoke. What's that in your gob, then? Me last fag end. To remind me of me evil life and all them dead days of yesteryear. <sighs> dead days, me Aunt Fanny. I bet you'll be back in your old ways by tea time. Oh, you do, do you? How much? Gotcha! <laughs> Don't look now. There comes the wife's new dress. It's a shame to take his money, really. Still, if he didn't spend it in here, it'd only go on beer and loose living. So I'm keeping him on the straight. It... Do you know, that's just how it happened in a dream I once had. I woke up screaming.
Um, which can you let me have on this lot, Mr Richards? You're never going to pawn your fishing tackle, are you, Andy? What's wrong with your wife's best tea set? You've already got it. I know. But you could have brought in a wristwatch to redeem it with. And how would she tell the time? Same as she always does. Are you bringing in an engagement ring? Not this time, Mr Richards. Take the fishing tackle. You'll be saving me from temptation. Have it your own way, Andy. But I'm warning you. You're breaking the chain. That means seven years bad luck. Huh. You mean what me and Flo have been having all these years is good luck? I've heard an ugly rumour that is a reformed character, but I believe it when I see it. Rent! Spent! I'll say this for him. It restores my cynicism in the human race. Percy, sorry, mate. Force of habit. Come on in. Come on in? Do you think I should? He probably wants to bend me ear about the faulty slates on the roof. No, I don't. I've got a nice blazing fire going. Come on in and warm yourself. Blazing fire? Him? I get it. He's sewn up the floorboards. We're wasting our time, Meredith. Why do we bother? The same reason climbers go up Mount Everest, Clifford. Because he's there. He'll have nothing for us. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Cross it? <laughs> I'm thinking of jumping off it. <laughs> now then, Percy. Bop you one again then, has he, lad? <laughs> No, lads, no. You misjudged him this time. <laughs> Why? What's to do, then? <laughs> he invited me in for a warm by the fire. <laughs> then he gave me a tenner off the arrears. <laughs> I was that excited. I lit me fag wig. <laughs> Hello! Anyone at home? Oh, it's you, is it? I mean, how do, missus? My mother-in-law. Is me daughter, dear? She's not back from work, missus. Do you want to come in and wait for her? Have I come to the right house? If you're my mother-in-law and you sound like her, of course you have. What's the game, then? Trying to get round me? No game, missus. Come in. I'll make you a cup of tea. You're inviting me in for a cup of tea? <laughs> Fainted. Now, this will show the world what the new handicap is made of. At one time, I'd have left a flat out on the pavement. Not now, not St Andrew Cap. I'll very kindly chuck this nice bucket of cold water over her. <coughs> Don't mention it, missus. Back to work. Now, how do I switch this thing on? How was the pictures last night, Flo? Lovely. We held hands. Soppy dirt. No, just force of habit. We always used to hold hands in back row when we was courting. Stopped him dipping into me handbag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you really enjoy your night out? Well, tell you the truth, I could have done with just one milk stout on the way home, but he was adamant. Wouldn't even let me buy fish and chips. He says if he's to start a new life with a clean slate, we've got to economise. Well, you won't argue with that. Well, yeah, I'd have said not, but I'm not so sure. Breakfast ready, pet. It's unnatural. She's only jealous. Should have said except on Sundays. <sighs> Lovely service, wasn't it, Pat? Very nice. The sermon was too short, but very nice. It could have done with a bit more cake. You're bored, silly pet. Why don't you take yourself off to the pub for half an hour? Thanks, but no thanks. I've lost the taste for it. <sighs> well, the evening is young, pet. What do you fancy doing? Don't know. I thought I might have a read. Where's that book we used to have? Propping up the leg of the telly. Talking of which, there's a good programme on the telly tonight that might just save my sanity. Switch on, pet. Difficult. Nobody move. Andy Cap, where is that telly? 
He's pawned it. I never. They came and took it back. Well, why didn't you give him the rental, you daft ape, but I left you the money? Ah, but I gave that to the debt collector. I left you ten pounds for him. I gave that to Percy. Well, what did you do with the rent money? Paid off the milkman. All right. What did you do with the money you got when you pawned your fishing tackle? Took you to the pictures with it. So we've lost the telly. Just for one mad night of Rocky Four. This is the last flipping straw. So, that's how it is, Mr Watson. He's been as good as gold and as dull as dishwater. Never despair, Mrs Cap. As long as we have a measure of agreement, there's always hope. What is there to agree on? That you two should never have got married. Now, you say your husband's a changed man. He's lost all interest. It's that fall in the canal. I think the water's gone to his cap. Mm, let's see, he's given up boozing? Completely. Gambling? Definitely. Womanising? Never touch the stuff. Yet there's still something missing. There is. And I think I know what it is. You see, Mrs Cap, all these reforms, while admirable, of course, are of a negative nature. To save your marriage, what Mr Cap has to do is something positive. Like what? If I might have a word in private. Do you reckon? Can I be letting on this? What are you whispering about? There's something Mr Watson wants you to do, Pet. Well, come on, woman, out with it. What? <laughs> <laughs> that show, Kim. Mr Watson suggested that if he really loved me, I should stop at home while he went to wait for it. It's lovely to have him back, but don't say anything. <laughs> All right, where have you been? If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. No, I wouldn't. It's true what they say. Audiences are more difficult in the north. Well, come on, I'm waiting. Sure, I. Where's me dinner rack bag? In the dustbin. Oh. Oh, she's lovely when she's angry, isn't she? Give us a kiss. Just going through the motions. See you next week. That's if I'm still here. <laughs>